My name is C.M.G. Lee. Yeah, there. And uh, I work mainly on illustrations and photography. And one of the key things which I think uh, would be really useful for Wikimedia is the ability to integrate interactivity into our illustrations, the pictures. Um, currently, most of Wikipedia uses still images. Occasionally, we use animated GIFs, and sometimes we use video clips. They are very useful uh, to illustrate some changing concept, but the problem is um, it doesn't give the user much control over what uh, the animation does. It just moves on through time. Of course, in videos, you can pause and you can play, but not much control. So part of what I'm trying to do is to make it more accessible and um, basically do something like what Flash does, okay, without using Flash, because we are, of course, open source. So um, in this talk, I'll firstly talk about the techniques that we can use. And then I can talk about the applications the, uh, uh, and then I'll just briefly show this uh, script which I've just been working on. If anyone wants to work on it, uh, let me know. Uh, we can uh, collaborate. And then uh, some best practice which I've learned uh, through my work. Okay, so let's start. Ah, first. So, you might have seen this map, which is the map of AC Nolario. And um, it started out as a simple static image. But with SVG, I could, for example, uh, put in uh, pointers that highlight each place. I allow the user to click so that you can select a few things. You can even select entire categories of things. Uh, you could highlight and unhighlight them. So this is an example of what we can do with SVG. Another example, um, which somewhat uh, sort of comes from the world of, say, virtual reality, is that you can take an image. In fact, this is a GIF file, which has a rotating uh, model of, I don't know, some Second World War truck. And you can make it respond to the mouse movement. So as I move my mouse left and right, you can see the mouse pointer there. I can rotate the tank like that. OK? So, this can be used for all sorts of purposes. It could be sort of mechanical engineering like this one. It could illustrate molecules. It could illustrate um, geology, for example, you know, the 3D model of a mountain. I'll show you one later. And um, you can also use it for other novel purposes. Okay, I'll, I'll show that in a while. So, techniques. Oh, uh, by chance, this page is actually live on the Wikimedia site. So if any of you want to follow along, if you have computers, um, you can just click on, just go to user, colon CMG Lee, and then you can try out the animations yourself if you like. Uh, by the way, it works best on Chrome, but, uh, well, uh, some don't work on Internet Explorer if any of you are evil enough to go for Microsoft. Just kidding. Um, so techniques, there are three ways uh, generally, to do SVG animation. The first, and the most powerful, you see up there, uh, is JavaScript or ECMAScript. The main problem about that is that, um, because of security reasons, uh, uploads to Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia uh, don't allow JavaScript. So if you have JavaScript in it and you try to upload it, it just says, uh, this file is not acceptable. So that brings me to the other way, the other two methods, cascading style sheets. Um, it is less powerful. It works uh, with hover effects and with animation. Uh, hover effects work on most brow modern browsers, but animation doesn't work on IE. The third way is a synchronized multimedia integrator integration language, also known as SMAL. It allows you to do hover and click effects. So for example, you can toggle the status of an object, and uh, you can do animation. Once again, it doesn't work on IE, but it works on Chrome and Firefox, at least. Okay. Uh, if anyone wants to figure out how um, each works, uh, like look at the code itself, uh, you can click on any of these and view the source. So, animation. Um, one of the advantages of animation, using SMIL, 
oh, sorry, not SVG. SVG. It says it has a much smaller file size compared to, say, a video. Um, because it's a vector graphic, it can be enlarged without getting blocky, as you know. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you can have interaction beyond just pausing and seeking, as in the video file. So um, this is just one silly example. It's a clock in Cambridge, UK, actually, uh, known as the Corpus Clock. This illustrates the principle of the grasshopper, grasshopper uh, escapement. And it is actually a very, very long animation. The thing is, um, this wheel on the left will go around once, and each time the wheel on the right will go around so, a step. And uh, it takes about 10 minutes to run. If you had stored that in a, as a video clip, or worse, as a GIF animation, you know, it would take megabytes of data. So this uh, file allows you to do it in just tens of K examples. Um, but as I say, it allows interactivity. So for example, this is another a very simple animation. Basically, it's a moon, and it shows all the soft landings we've done so far. Um, for example, if I uh, hover over Polo 11, you can see this little flashing thing. OK, that animation was done in SVG. So I know it's quite trivial in this case, but you, know, you couldn't do this with a video file or with a GIF animation. So example. Um, you can also fake 3D rotating objects, like say with this Burj Khalifa. You see the tower is actually rotating. Um, once again, because it is SVG, I can interact with it. For example, if I highlight part of the tower, I can see some of its cross section. I can highlight a cross section and I see some different parts of it, where they actually lie. All these, of course, are on their respective articles. So if you go to Burj Khalifa, you can find this animation. OK, so that's animation. Let's go to interactivity. Now, one of the uh, most basic forms of interactivity is just showing additional information. So if I have a diagram, I don't want to clutter it with all sorts of irrelevant information. Maybe relevant, but only to, say, you know, a select uh, audience. Example might be this one, which shows uh, how the Chinese years that go from like, red to pink and the elements uh, correspond to the English years. So it is already quite cluttered, but say if I want to show more information, say I want to hover over 2016, okay, I can pop up more information, like you know, year of the fire monkey, the dates of uh, the year, and say the equivalent Chinese of years. Now all that can be done with tooltips. Um, that's not so special really, you can actually just do it in an Inkscape order. It's just the idea of doing it uh, is useful. Um, you can also make uh, tooltips um, using graphics. So basically, on certain uh, browsers, I won't name which one won't run it, um, you can say highlight, this is just an example, and say show a number. Of course, in this case, it's just you know, a rendered uh, image, which is the number. But it could be any image, really. Uh, and even more powerful, uh, you can actually use an SVG element itself. So this, for example, is a plot of female life expectancy at birth against male life expectancy for a lot of countries, in fact, all the countries I could find data for. And for example, you know, it's so cluttered. Say I want to see, uh, what is this outlier here? Oh, it's Ethiopia. So I can pop up more information uh, just based on what my mouse is on. So for example, I can highlight all of Europe, for example. So, um, these sort of tooltips uh, can be categorized in, say, four methods. You could use a title tag, an anchor link, embedded custom cursor, and a CSS hover selector. So, um, yeah, uh, if you look at the page, yeah, it tells you sort of the pros and cons of each. Okay, moving on. You can also have hyperlinks. So, for example, if I have an SVG which contains um, a map of the uh, airline alliances, I can, for example, uh, link, say, I don't know, uh, let's just pick one, Air India, for example. I can make it so that I can click on it and it loads up the Air India page. So um, not only is SVG um, useful for sort of interactivity, it can also be used to hyperlink to more information if the user is so inclined.
Okay, progressive disclosure. Um, once again, the idea of using the uh, highlighting on uh, hover um, can be used, say, for this diagram, which shows the orbits around the Earth. You could, for example, um, highlight the orbits when the mouse is on it so that um, for, for teaching purposes, say if you, know, you were a teacher teaching in the school, you could say highlight one while explaining it, and then move on to the next one. So the students aren't overwhelmed with all the uh, data at the same time. Um, this idea also applies to graphs. So this graph actually contains about 7,000 data points. It lists the uh, population of all the states in the US, including DC, um, for the years 1900 to 2015, I think. So it's quite a mess. But if you um, allow the user to progressively uh, find the data, uh, you get much clearer trends and patterns. Example, say I hover over Washington, DC. You can see, oh, its population is uh, quite interestingly sort of variable. Um, I, I have clicked to select it. I can now, say, compare it with Nevada. Or I can even group them all. So I can look at all the mountain states, for example, and then that's the graph. Or I can highlight here, say, look at Texas, and so on. Um, you can also use it, for example, um, for imaging or, or image processing. So this is the Milky Way taken at different wavelengths of light. If, for example, I'm interested to see um, how the Milky Way looks. Uh, by the way, uh, the main diagram is at the bottom. All the top ones are thumbnails. So say I want to overlay um, optical and, I don't know, something interesting. Say uh, gamma ray, because there's a little spot there. So I click on that, and it overlays both images. Say I want to compare that with, I don't know, uh, atomic hydrogen. Click that, and that also appears. Um, overlay. So, uh, using SVG, um, it allows the, the viewer to sort of, uh, to decide on his own story, like how he wants to explore the data. You know, I don't dictate that. Oh, you have to overlay optical with gamma ray, for example. Um, you know, it, it opens up an avenue for um, for self discovery. Okay. Um, next. Okay, um, I've talked about several techniques that uh, I've found. Um, now, the applications, what can they be used for? So, interactive timelines is what I consider, you know, uh, a way to show a change in the system over time. Um, the time could be years or even seconds. So, for years, uh, by the way, I need to update this diagram because uh, soon things will change. Um, it shows the members of the EU. So it shows when EU members joined and leave and left. Yeah, so that's why I need to update it. Um, so for example, in 1957, these countries joined. Uh, 1962, Algeria left. Then in 1973, uh, UK and company joined, and so on. Um, I can manually select a few years. I don't have to go in sequence. I can also turn on and off. I can say uh, shade none, shade everything, all today. Uh, and once again, it allows teachers, for example, to point out certain things or certain trends which might not be obvious just looking at a static map. Okay. Oh, okay, this one. Uh, that just shows the, um, the flight of, uh, say, an object uh, you know, in, in in a vacuum. Say if I threw a ball at uh, various angles or elevations, how it would flow. So if I mouse over the right, I can see the positions of the balls through time. Okay? So um, it shows both the distance, how, it, how far it flies, and you know, how long it takes to get there. So another teaching aid, perhaps, for physics. Yeah. Got to move on since uh, time is limited. So, simple 3D viewer. Uh, one of the ideas I've had, and I've spoken with uh, some people uh, who work with GLAM, um, is to be able to scan artifacts, say, with a turntable. And when you have um, a pic a pictures of artifacts from different angles, you can rotate them virtually. So it allows you know, viewers from elsewhere or anywhere to examine an artifact without actually having to go to the museum or you know, getting their grubby hands on them.
on, on the artifacts. So, you know, you can rotate around uh, and see the object from different angles. And uh, not only that, you could explore geographical features. So, for example, this is uh, the island of Hawaii. You could sort of rotate around and see, oh, okay, it looks like that. Yeah. That's Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. Okay. So those are the two um, applications I've identified so far. I'm sure there are more, and you know, I welcome anyone to uh, sort of discuss with me what else we can do with this. Um, I'll just briefly talk about this Python script that I wrote. Um, when I wrote it, I wrote it in Python 2. So uh, I tried last night to, write it, to run it in Python 3, full of bugs, uh, so I have to redo it if any of you want to sort of run it in Python 3. But roughly, I'll just say what this can do. As I showed you earlier, this uh, model tap, uh, truck, I could use it for geography. This is sort of a 3D render of Mount Everest. I can move around and sort of rotate mountains, see it from different angles. I can, for example, use it in chemistry. Molecule. Sorry about the resolution. I couldn't find a better uh, resolution one. But nevertheless, I can rotate the model. So much more useful than just you know, a static image where the, the shape of the molecule isn't so obvious until you rotate it. Um, the same idea can be used um, for timelines. So this is an example which shows the progression of the various empires in the world, at least some empires in the world, uh, through history. So let's start with, say, 1940, uh, 1492. So you know, the respective countries are there, and through time, they grow and shrink, and you can see how they progress. Okay? Um, this was originally a GIF animation which the user couldn't control. You could see just expand and contract. But now as a timeline, I can go forward and back and say, oh, compare these two at my own speed or at my own pace. Can also be used in astrophysics. Example might be, say, the solar eclipse, which is scheduled to happen in America next year. I can see how, you know, in a, a matter of like, hours, uh, the shadow moves across the face of America. Um, I've just put in a snippet of the, the source there, if anyone wants to try it out. Oh, I should mention that um, this timeline method uh, just uses CSS. It doesn't use uh, Smile, so I've tested it and it works in most modern browsers. Let's practice. Okay, so now just a few lessons that I've learned. Well, the first thing, as I've sort of hinted at, um, not all browsers support uh, SVG animation or interactive SVG. So I think it's very important if we were to make these SVGs that they degrade gracefully. So you don't get like, a, a bad crash or whatever uh, if you try to run it on some browsers. And one way I, I do that is first to make it so that it looks okay as a thumbnail. So like say this uh, bridge thumbnail, that's comparison of bridges. And then I add the CSS hover effects. And after that, I add the smile effects. So if the browser doesn't support a uh, smile, it can still show the CSS. So there's still some use of it. And if that doesn't work, then at least I still get a respectable picture. Um, it's also useful if you use tool tips that um, new lines are replaced. That's something I found that on IE, um, new lines are replaced by spaces. And everything just munches into a single line. So yeah, just check that it reads. Um, there's another issue for mobile devices. The problem is that touch screens, at least quite a lot of the older touch screens, have no hover effect. So you can't just move a mouse you know, over it without actually clicking. When you click, it includes the hover effect. So um, this uh, bridge example is one uh, that, that uh, takes in this into account. So I run this SVG image, which is comparison of bridges. Say I want to compare, uh, and by the way, all these bridges are drawn to scale, so you can actually see the relative sizes. Say I want to say, um, how does the Golden Gate Bridge compare to the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Tower Bridge? Okay, so I can click and select as before, but I've also put in these eye icons. Um, and I make it so that when you click on the eye icon, it brings you to the Wikipedia article. Now I originally made it so that uh, clicking on the bridge brings you to the Wikipedia article. Problem is that on mobile devices, you can't just hover on the bridge without clicking on it. 
So you know, this is a workaround that I found reasonably useful. Um, and then the other thing is, how do you get uh, readers to interact with the graphics? Because when they go to a Wikipedia page, they see a thumbnail. They don't know that it's actually interactive. So what I do, it's a workaround really, um, is to put in a link, for example, in the SVG image, hover over or click the silhouette to highlight it. So hopefully they will be prompted that, you know, if they want to interact more with it, they can click the link and it loads the SVG page. So I just link directly to the file. Okay, so um, thank you for coming again. Um, I have about eight minutes for questions, so if anyone wants to um, ask anything, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I saw your hand go up first, so yeah. Hello? Hi. After converting a GIF to an, SV, uh, to an SVG, uh, I see it as a static image on the, on the Wikipedia page. Is there a way to, to make it rotate by default, as it does in GIF? Fair enough, thank you. Anyone? Oh, by the way, uh, these thumbnails, they're all live. If you want to play with it, just uh, click on one of them. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and play with it if you have a computer with you. Okay, uh, please. A question for the thumbnails. Um, is there a way to define which um, part of the SVG you will see in the thumbnail, or is it always for of the first second of the animation? I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, you know, um, the thumbnail. What does um, is there a way to uh, to set what it shows now, or but uh, does it always shows the whole anime, uh, the the whole status, or the status? The first uh, second of the animation, or what? Yes. Um, well, those that I've made so far, they just play the whole thing. Uh, so, like this one, which is quite a silly exercise, but it's fun. It simulates 3D. Really. Um, you can, because uh, you have all these, uh, how do you say, um, mouse event handlers. You can say, when I mouse over this, jump to uh, the fifth second of the animation. Um, you, did, you need to do some programming. Well, you need to do some programming anyway, but uh, it is not insurmountable. It can be done easily. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, come, come see me later. Yeah, my question is about the programming. Is uh, What you showed us is pure SVG with SMIL, or is it also JavaScript included? No, okay. Yes, it is um, SVG with SMIL, and know that there's no JavaScript included. That's the thing that I was trying to say, that uh, Wikimedia forbids um, embedded ja uh, JavaScript. So I had to develop all this without JavaScript. Well, if, if it, the, the, the problem with JavaScript is that it allows a lot of cross-site scripting. So for example, if I wanted to be nasty, I could pop up a login page, a fake login page, and the user enters his uh, access information, and then I've captured this information. So, you know, I, I can understand why they borrow JavaScript, but you know, that's life. Okay, please. Um, does it work in the media viewer, or do I have to open a, a X, an, an another browser, browser window? Uh, yes, it doesn't get rendered in media viewer, because media viewer just shows the thumbnail. Um, you have to open the SVG file directly. Um, nowadays, 
You can say all browsers handle SVGs natively. Um, but the user has to be prompted to click on the SVG. That's why uh, in my slide here, um, I had this caption link to say that, you know, click on this SVG image to see more. Maybe it would be a good idea to uh, develop something that it would work in a media viewer? Because it would improve the usability. True, yes, you've got a good point. Uh, okay, if, if anyone can suggest you know, who I should speak with about this, um, yeah, please let me know. How did you create uh, all these uh, examples? So did you code them uh, I mean, by hand, or, or are there some tools that uh, help us uh, in the creation of this kind of images? Yeah, I, I'm rather old school, so I tend to um, draw the SVGs by hand. Um, of course, by hand may also mean write a Python script to, to render the SVG. But generally, I create the SVG code directly rather than using, say, Inkscape. Uh, I find it gives me better control. I know it might not be for everyone, uh, but when I you know, try it out on Inkscape, it does not have such fine control that I need. Anyone else? Um, I would just notice that some of the examples you showed worked actually on iOS on the tablet and some don't. The bridge thing works brilliantly, but all the other one that with rotations uh, doesn't work at all. Any knowledge about uh, when this thing could be fixed or work it around? Um, I must say, because th this was done through time, so I incorporate new ideas that I have. So some of the newer ideas um, would try to handle these um, sort of prob problematic issues. The, uh, and the older ones might not. So, Maybe I should have gone back to fix them, but you know, uh, yeah, uh, mainly a matter of time and interest. Also, um, yeah, I, I don't specifically target iOS or tablets because I find a lot of um, a lot of interactive uh, behaviors don't really work anymore, like the hover and all that. So it's a balance between trying to support as many devices as possible and also you know getting reasonable uh, out, uh, throughput, basically. Anyone else? Anyone? Uh, <coughs> just a short question. Is this SVG program useful also for other websites, or is it thought only for Wikipedia sites? Um, basically, it's in comments. So you can use it on uh, basically any website where you can embed images. Um, never mind. Uh, um, I suppose it's most targeted towards um, places where you teach or show people things. So, for example, Wiki Books, uh, you know, Wikiversity maybe, or uh, definitely Wikipedia. Um, but there's no stopping you using anywhere you think is relevant. Anyone want? Okay. Anyway, I think we've come to the end of the time. So. Uh, my uh, user ID, again, in case uh, you need it, is CMG Lee. So uh, give me a shout if you wish to discuss anything. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>